Good morning everyone. I am Sushmita Priyadarshini. My topic of presentation is tinnitus and its evaluation. So most of the uh, patients will have complaints like they can hear a ringing sensation in the ear and it can be like soft or loud or they can hear in one ear or in both the ears. It can be high pitched, low, uh, low pitched etc. And uh, it, it, it increases uh, gradually and uh, in some people uh, the sound causes depression, anxiety or interferes with the uh, concentration. Uh, so the tinnitus is the hearing of sound when, when there is no external uh, sound is present and it may also sound like a clicking, roaring, hissing. Uh, ex um, buzzing etc and uh, rarely unclear voices or music are heard so several authors has given uh, a definition for tinnitus so ansi 1969 has given uh, defined as the sensation of sound without external stimulation and shulman in 1988 he defined tinnitus as an aberrant perception of sound reported by a patient that is unrelated to an external sound source of stimulation and just above uh, 1995 uh, tinnitus is the perception of a sound that results uh, from activity uh, within the nervous system without any corresponding uh, vibratory activity within the cochlea and uh, unrelated to ex external stimuli so Penner in 1993, he said that tinnitus uh, patients perceive uh, uh, tinnitus as a sound completely different from anything previously experienced in the external environment. Tinnitus can be perceived as a formless sound either uh, tonal or complex in nature that resembles environmental sounds. It is believed that this kind of uh, perception occurs as a result of abnormal neuronal activity at a subcortical level of auditory pathway. So according to him it is a sound which is completely different from a uh, uh, previously experienced sounds and uh, examples are it's like hissing, ringing, buzzing, as I already said, uh, the escaping stream, fluorescent light, running engine, it can be humming, etc. Uh, perception of tinnitus has been related to abnormal synchronization of the auditory nerve activity, imbalanced activity of type 1 and type 2 afferent fibers in the auditory system and it is involves uh, impaired pattern recognition, memory and interconnection with other systems, particularly the limbic and autonomic systems. As a result, uh, this model directs our attention away from the concept of tinnitus belonging to place or anatomical and suggests that it is associated within uh, many centers throughout the nervous system. So limbic system controls the basic emotions and autonomic system is uh, bodily functions not consciously uh, directed such as breathing, the heartbeat and uh, uh, digestive processes. So whenever one's mood is good, the breathing pattern uh, will be relaxed. But due to tinnitus, there is change in mood, which in turn has an effect on breathing and other bodily um, activities. So what is the difference between tinnitus and hyperacusis? Tinnitus and hyperacusis are two symptoms of hearing disorders sometimes observed together. In tinnitus, patients hear a ringing or buzzing noise without external stimuli, uh, while hyperacusis involves the increased sensitivity uh, to the sound, um, like uh, they can't control uh, the um, loud sounds, uh, they may feel pain, uh, etc. So one or both ears may be involved. The most common cause of both uh, conditions is routine exposure to very high volumes of noise often uh, experienced by industrial and construction workers so as well as uh, some musicians as well so as already discussed tinnitus uh, is the sensation of sound in the ear uh, even though there's no sound uh, is being produced uh, externally so most commonly this manifests in the form of ringing noise whereas hyperacusis uh, is experienced even small sounds are very loud both issues are uh, symptoms of hearing loss rather than being standalone conditions 
so that can vary in intensity across individuals and people experience even small sounds as um, very loud causes of tinnitus has two variants uh, one is otologic causes and another is non otologic causes uh, tinnitus is not a disease but a symptom that can uh, result from number of uh, underlying causes based on otologic uh, classification tinnitus can be divided into subjective and objective in subjective tinnitus uh, may be due to uh, wax fluid in uh, middle ear um, otitis media meniere's disease eustachian tube dysfunction otosclerosis and presbycusis also noise trauma um, autotoxic drugs and tumors in eighth nerve and in objective tinnitus may be due to vascular tumors of middle ear aneurysm of carotid artery palatal myoclonus etc non autologic uh, due to um, disease of uh, central nervous system anemia arteriosclerosis hypertension hypoglycemia epilepsy and migraine etc so next we will move on to classification of tinnitus so domon and tyler 1992 uh, suggested that several classification systems are needed to understand tinnitus properly so we have five different classification such as classification based on pathology severity duration site and etiology so the uh, these classifications will be discussing each one in coming slides so classification based on pathology one is normal tinnitus and another is pathological tinnitus normal tinnitus is the one which is experienced by a person without any underlying cause and without uh, any external stimulation whereas pathological tinnitus is the one which is caused uh, due to underlying causes etc so classification based on severity uh, is acceptable tinnitus and unacceptable tinnitus whereas acceptable tinnitus uh, is does not bother the person uh, it's non clinical whereas unacceptable tinnitus is disturbing to the patient classification based on duration temporary tinnitus uh, short uh, temporary tinnitus is a short term tinnitus probably due to temporary dysfunction of the auditory system's chest after noise in a club or drug exposure um, and permanent tinnitus is maybe either constant or intermittent uh, that's uh, that's due to constant exposure of noise uh, classification based on site one is due to any problems in middle ear such as fluid in the middle ear and another is due to any damage to auditory nerve um, um, at the, uh, or peripheral neural and uh, next is central neural where where uh, you observe any abnormal uh, activity in uh, central nervous system classification based on etiology uh, like uh, such as uh, noise induced uh, hearing loss meniere's disease autotoxicity presbycusis and uh, even it can be unknown cause so tinnitus as a symptom uh, it can be two types um, based on physician and patient uh, of to experience one is objective tinnitus and subjective tinnitus so objective tinnitus uh, is tinnitus that can be heard by the physician or any other person Uh, it will be so loud that even uh, the next person can hear the tinnitus in some cases tinnitus is generated by a self sustained oscillation within the ear this is called objective tinnitus which can arise from muscle spasms uh, around the middle ear so the causes of uh, objective tinnitus are uh, muscular diseases and vascular diseases Uh, vascular causes such as like uh, where the blood vessels uh, could be distended it will be swollen due to long standing high blood pressure um, and uh, um, arteriosclerosis or atherosclerosis where the uh, where uh, the uh, arterial walls weakened and it creates noise as the blood rushes in the narrow path 
and next is uh, one rare and unfortunate reason for the growth of new blood vessels near the ear uh, is to supply blood to a tumor due to the origin of new uh, blood vessels which supplies the tumor uh, and tumors when they occur in the ear head or neck they are quite quite capable of uh, creating a noise Muscular causes of objective tinnitus. Abnormalities in the muscles near the ear can cause objective tinnitus. One example is amyotrophic uh, lateral sclerosis. In this degenerative disease, the nerves uh, that normally supply muscles uh, will die. The muscles that were supplied by those um, dead nerves will then um, result in atrophy. And uh, a muscle that is undergoing atrophy experiences tiny tremors called fasciculations. So if these fasciculations are close to the auditory system, it can be heard as a sound. Other muscular causes of uh, objective tinnitus are things that cause abnormal muscle movements such as spasms. A muscle spasm in the stapedius muscle is known to cause objective tinnitus. So conditions associated with these objective tinnitus are uh, patellus uh, eustachian tube where eustachian tube is normally closed instead of stays intermittently open. When this occurs the patient experiences the uh, hearing of self-generated sound and ca uh, cardiac vasculitis pulsating and synchronous with uh, heartbeat vascular tumors in middle ear middle ear muscle contractions. So objective tinnitus is quite rare when one considers the number of patients seen with this complaint. And the other is subjective tinnitus. It is most uh, frequently encountered problem. Here only patient can hear the uh, sound. Uh, in conditions associated with subjective tinnitus are autological disorders. Uh, most common cause in any age group is sensory neural hearing loss. Heller and Bergman 1953 have given condition associated with uh, uh, subjective tinnitus uh, such as autosclerosis, Meniere's disease, pressure or neuritis of the auditory, uh, uh, auditory apparatus, brain tumor, eighth nerve tumor, otitis media, acute chronic separative and non-separative uh, otitis media. Metabolic dysfunction, thyroidism, impacted cerumen, cervical constriction, psychosis. Psychosis refers to abnormal condition of the mind uh, described as involving a loss of contact with reality. Uh, and Bell's palsy, foreign body trauma to ear um, and head injury, meningitis and hemorrhage. Uh, neurological conditions such as head trauma can cause tinnitus, skull fracture, severe closed head injury, uh, meningitis and multiple sclerosis. Uh, pharmacological factors where all types of drugs can be considered as possible cause of tinnitus, autotoxic drugs, aminoglycosides, aspirin, caffeine and nicotine cause tinnitus. So anti-inflammatory drugs, antibiotics, sedatives and antidepressants all of them will cause tinnitus. Factors related to dental, uh, where the patient with tinnitus may describe active uh, temporomandibular joint disorder, uh, where uh, it is uh, quite common in general population. And uh, it, uh, tinnitus secondary to uh, temporomandibular joint disorder uh, shows low pitch, often related to jaw activity and jaw trauma. And psychological factors uh, where most sufferers of tinnitus realize fatigue and stress play a major role uh, in severity of their complaint. Uh, stress increases the uh, perception of this sound and uh, there has been some studies uh, majority of patients with uh, severe tinnitus have many features of depression. So when we talk about uh, psychological effects of tinnitus, we talk about emotional distress where patient feels irritation, annoyance to the sound um, and difficulty in concentrating to the activities and uh, to sleep, etc. And the patient feels depression and despair. Interpersonal com complaints um, such as like the uh, lack of uh, understanding and negative impact uh, to the relationships. Um, 
relationships and somatic distress um, such as like the feel head head pain neck pain uh, and tension in jaw muscles uh, and dizziness and hypersensitivity to the sounds so they feel depression anger anxiety irritability and uh, perceptual difficulties hearing problems in demanding social situations and intrusiveness such as like continuous focusing of tinnitus concentration difficulties insomnia etc uh, tinnitus duration the proposed definition regarding the tinnitus duration is that the episode of tinnitus uh, can be either very short or um, continuous very short as in temporary uh, tinnitus following noise exposure or very high dose of aspirin um, and the frequently used criterion is that five minutes of perception of sound to be classified as tinnitus it is arbitrary and does not have any clear uh, relevance uh, theoretical or clinical basis for this and the time factor is irrelevant for the mechanisms of tinnitus generation uh, evaluation of tinnitus the quantification of symptom is fundamental to understanding its mechanisms and uh, treatments hence the uh, mechanism uh, measurement of tinnitus will be uh, focused under audiological evaluation medical evaluation and mental health assessment by psychologist audiological evaluation uh, we take case history and uh, based on case history we'll do the otoscope examination next step is psychoacoustical evaluations and physiological evaluations so medical evaluations we um, there also will take case histories and we'll do physical examination and radiological examinations just mri ct scan etc etc and laboratory testing so under case history and neurologic evaluate evaluation important factors to determine are associated with otological uh, problems such as otalgia hearing loss otoria hearing fluctuations hyperacusis recruitment oral fullness and vestibular symptoms so these often indicates that tinnitus is secondary phenomenon of primary otological disorder it is important to evaluate the tinnitus patient to identify cochlear toxic exposures to noise and uh, chemicals and this uh, noise exposure history includes military occupational and recreational exposures so if we talk about military history um, there we have to identify the duration of the noise exposure and what uh, what is the level of noise uh, experienced by the patient such as serving in artillery using small weapons or large guns or serving in aircraft carrier and in occupational history such as type of which type of noise is ex, uh, exposed and whether it is daily or intermittent uh, with how much is was the duration of noise exposure and um, how much uh, the duration of uh, the usage of uh, ear protection devices and what what is the type of uh, protection devices they were using and potentially cochlear toxic chemical exposure should also be investigated because they can cause inner ear damage and um, it leads to tinnitus so the association of tinnitus which with disturbances of balance can indicate inner ear retrocochlear or central pathology additional information to obtain includes current and past medications medical problems example diabetes hypertension arrhythmia arrhythmias and prior surgeries uh, particularly otologic surgery or high blood loss procedures so head trauma alcohol and illegal drug use occupational exposure to uh, neurologic neurotoxic chemicals chemotherapy and radiation may also um, results in tinnitus so in audiological evaluation um, uh, we'll do pure tone audiometry for octave frequencies from 250 to 8 kilohertz and uh, uh, inter octave uh, frequencies such as 1.53 and 6 kilohertz if it is required uh, and high frequency audiometry above uh, 10 kilohertz if thresholds for lower frequency signals are within normal limits and the results of uh, auto acoustic emissions are also normal word recognition performances at patient's most comfortable level uh, is uh, tested
and we do tympanometry um, and uh, acoustic reflex threshold testing only with uh, caution because acoustic reflex measurement is contradicted in patient reporting hyperacusis especially at levels exceeding the patient loudness discomfort levels and uh, dpoe to assess outer hair cells integrity and function normal dpoe findings are value uh, which is an appropriate normative and abr neurodiagnostic assessment is performed to rule out uh, retrocochlear pathology so vestibular test batteries such as electronystagmography fistula test caloric test rotatory chair test and posteriography to rule out vestibular uh, involvement so the next step in the evaluation is psychoacoustic evaluation where we check pitch matching loudness matching and post masking effect feldman masking curves loudness discomfort level tinnitus questionnaire tinnitus tinnitus handicap inventory um, is measured so in psychoacoustic measurement uh, pitch matching uh, we give tone in the same year Uh, where the patient is feeling the ring ringing sensation at 20 dB SPL, that is uh, above uh, 20 dB uh, added above the threshold and at all frequencies, and ask the patient to match uh, his tinnitus with the external tone, uh, where tinnitus pitch match is performed for each year. So if the patient is confused with between the pitch and the loudness of the tinnitus, then we have to present a alternative. Uh, Uh, tones forced choice method that is alternative tones uh, will be presented in alternative sequences so that each tone is heard four or five times and uh, patient has to choose uh, uh, the tone more like the tinnitus so the patient may require additional presentations and such request is not uncommon when the pair of tones are remote to the frequency re uh, region which corresponds to their so for example uh, we present 1 kilohertz and 2 kilohertz uh, and ask the patient uh, at what level if they uh, at what um, tone are uh, is very similar to their tinnitus if the patient chooses 2 kilohertz then we have to present 2 kilohertz and 3 kilohertz so then patient might choose at 3 kilohertz so then we have to again move on to next frequency we, uh, we have to give 3 kilohertz and 4 kilohertz so patient will compare both the tones and uh, select 4 kilohertz so then we have to give 4 kilohertz and 6 kilohertz so if patient choose 4 kilohertz so like two two consecutive uh, times patient chooses 4 kilohertz and then uh, it seems to be the, uh, this will be implicated as the region of uh, pitch match so the next Uh, test is octa confusion test this is to rule out the confusion of the patient to select uh, the frequency of the tone so the octave confusion test is performed by presenting the tone that the individual selected as a pitch match and then a tone uh, one octave above that frequency followed by the presentation of the original pitch and a tone one octave below that frequency so for example if the patient is selected uh, 8 kilohertz as their uh, pitch match so then we have to present one octave ab above that is 16 kilohertz and one oct octave below that is 4 kilohertz um, so for example if Uh, the patient selects 8 kilohertz will present uh, 16 kilohertz and 8 kilohertz uh, patient chooses 8 kilohertz so then i uh, will present 8 kilohertz and 4 kilohertz the patient chooses 8 kilohertz only then uh, the confusion is not there so 8 kilohertz is the result then it is negative confusion test is negative so if the patient chooses 16 kilohertz instead of 8 kilohertz when we present 8 kilohertz and 16 kilohertz uh, when the pitch match is at 8 kilohertz uh if patient chooses 16 kilohertz again we have to present 4 kilohertz and 8 kilohertz so then patient might choose 8 kilohertz so then again we have to uh, present 8 kilohertz and 16 kilohertz the patient might choose 16 kilohertz so then there is confusions in between the tones for the patient so this is like positive uh, result for the um, confusion test 
uh, in loudness matching once the patient uh, matches their pitch uh, we give a different loudness levels so that the patient will compare the uh, loudness to their test tone uh, we use the ascending procedure and the procedure is performed to each ear and the loudness of tinnitus is matched to less than 10 db sensation levels and these measures does not seem to correspond to the degree of distress that the patient is experiencing so post ma ma masking effect uh, where uh, the temporary suppression or disappearance of tinnitus uh, is resulted after uh, after we give the masking noise for a period of time uh, we present the sound uh, identified uh, with pitch match for 1 minute at 10 db uh, sl and classification of post masking uh, effects into four categories such as positive complete positive partial negative and rebound uh, in positive complete total residual inhibition observed the tinnitus is completely absent where in positive partial tinnitus loudness level as uh, less than what it was before the measurement of the residual inhibition and the individual still hears the tinnitus but at a reduced intensity level so in negative no change in tinnitus loudness rebound where uh, increase in the tinnitus loudness level is resulted uh, providing information about residual inhibition can be helpful in the uh, use of masking as a relief procedure feldman masking curves where feldman uh, proposed masking curves to relate uh, the curve type to the cause as well as uh, tinnitus to the site of lesion uh, definition minimum masking levels are the least amount of intensity required to mask the tinnitus at whatever frequency is uh, being presented so procedure of this feldman's masking test uh, is established levels for masking the individual tinnitus routinely using narrow band noise at each of the discrete frequency uh, tested on the classic audiogram that is 250 to 8 kilohertz at the frequency of the tinnitus match and with narrow band, uh, broadband noise give a continuous tone or noise band for uh, approximately 1 to 2 second duration find out the minimum level at which uh, only external sound is heard and record the uh, maximum masking level at each frequency by asking patients whether he hears his own sound with external noise uh, external in test ear or uh, only external sound uh, so the curves are uh, categorized into six types convergence type where the masking and threshold curve converge uh, from low to high frequencies uh, this is for industrial uh, deafness and divergence type uh, where masking and threshold curves diverge from low to high frequencies and uh, it shows the tinnitus of unknown origin in normal hearing and congruence type uh, masking and threshold curves practically coincide uh, uh, with any intensity range of 10 db maximally uh, which shows minor disease uh, and distance type uh, to mask that tinnitus each sound should have intensity well above its subjective threshold 20 db or greater uh, uh, this for presbycusis uh, dispersion to mask tinnitus greater intensity of pure tones is required than of uh, narrow band noise uh, indicates serous otitis media persistence uh, where the tinnitus cannot be masked by any stimulus presented indicating cochlear degeneration so these are the graphs um, of the curve types where the first one is uh, showing convergence type and uh, second one is showing divergence type uh, from low frequency to high frequency and uh, this is congruence type uh, and there is a uh, distance type fourth graph and fifth graph is showing dis dispersion type and last graph is showing the persistence type Vernon and uh, Fenwick 1984 have given the test of maskability um, 
the intensity difference in db between the threshold for the masking tone and the lowest level at which complete masking curse is minimum uh, masking level minimum masking level found at the tinnitus pitch of the patient using narrow band noise center at the pitch match is taken into account if minimum masking level is uh, 0 to 3 db, db sl success of masking is highly likely and uh, if Minimum masking level is 4 to 10 dBSL, success of masking is questionable. If it is 11 to 20 dBSL, uh, success of masking is unlikely. And if it is 20 plus dBSL, masking is almost surely will fail. So minimum masking level is useful for description of patient's tinnitus and also provides information relative to the uh, possibility of uh, describe, uh, prescribing masking as a relief procedure for the tinnitus. In loudness discomfort level, uh, this is to determine tolerance for sound. Uh, it is measured with pure tones uh, from uh, 1000 to 8, 8 kHz and live voice signals. The signal is cold running speech present initially at the patient's most comfort level and uh, then increased in 5 dB steps. Test frequency is twice whenever possible. So the Tyler and uh, Conrad Arms 1983 have offered a novel suggestion as to correlate well with the uh, perceived severity of tinnitus. Using a tone at pitch match, they measured its loudness uh, discomfort level converted that value into sones and phones level, uh, which correlated well with the subjective rating of severity. So to assess uh, tinnitus, uh, we use uh, question, several questionnaires uh, along with the subjective uh, and objective tests. So, um, so these are the question is for tinnitus we use in clinics. Subjective tinnitus severity scale, tinnitus handicap inventory, tinnitus functional index, tinnitus reaction questionnaire, tinnitus severity scale, tinnitus hearing survey. So where uh, patient has to answer the questions and rate themselves uh, their, their uh, tinnitus and uh, uh, which which will be helpful for the diagnosis. So first one, uh, tinnitus severity scale. Where Svito and uh, Levy designed this 15 item inventory to reflect five categories in which tinnitus is known to have effects. The categories are intrusiveness, distress, hearing loss, sleep disturbance, and medication. A three point scoring system is used to score the responses. Uh, the another uh, most common questionnaire we use in clinic is tinnitus handicap inventory. The tinnitus handicap inventory uh, is a 25 item self report questionnaire that has functional, emotional and uh, catastrophic subscales. So scoring takes 5 to 10 minutes with a score of 4 for a yes and 2 for sometimes and 0 for no. Uh, so based on this uh, uh, we'll score. And uh, tinnitus functional index, uh, it is introduced by Michael et al. in 1912. The TFI consists of 25 items the applicable for both clinical and research users. This questionnaire is used to determine the severity of tinnitus as well as define what negative impacts the patient is experiencing in response to it. Questions cover eight subscales that summarize the areas of intrusiveness, sense of control, cognitive effects, sleep disturbance, auditory difficulties, interference with relaxation, reduction in quality of life, and emotional distress. Patients uh, respond to the items using 10 point scale. An overall scale that ranges from 0 to 100 is calculated along with subscale scores. Subjective tinnitus severity scale, uh, it consists of 16 item scales uh, which is described by Halford and Anderson as designed to assess the severity of tinnitus which is defined in terms of how uh, the intrusiveness and uh, the disturbance in sleep and relaxation and how distressing the tinnitus is. Each question is answered by a or no question and each question holds one point. So out, uh, 10 out of 16 items earn a point if the response is yes, like 10 points and the remaining will be 0. Score range from 0 to 16 with higher scores uh, reflecting greater overall severity. Tinnitus reaction questionnaire. Uh, 
it is mainly based on the tyler and baker data it has 26 item uh, in it and based on four factors the primary one uh, is Uh, based on general distress anger annoyance helplessness despair and the second one is interference with work and leisure the third partly overlaps the second but includes more severe signs of distress like crying sleep pro problems feelings of being driven mad uh, the fourth factor was avoidance of activity this is scored on five point rating scales tinnitus hearing survey uh, it is described by national center for uh, rehabilitative auditory research and it is used to differentiate issues that are arising from tinnitus versus uh, those are caused by hearing challenges uh, it consists of 10 items where the four items uh, is to tinnitus specific issues and four related to uh, common hearing problems and the final two are inquiries about sound tolerance issues and the patients answer using a five point scale that correlates to no problem to all to a very big problem in response to a range of hearing and tinnitus challenges uh, reviewing these results can be useful in counseling so next is visual uh, analog scale this is uh, one of the most used methods in the assessment of tinnitus Uh, it's very uh, much used to assess chronic pain in tinnitus patients we ask the patient to assign a 0 to 10 score to their tinnitus with the help of proper ruler the assessment uh, must be carried out in relation to volume and disturbance it is easily applicable and understood by most uh, patients where the score disc scale describes uh, 0 means like no pain on to 3 is mild annoying pain, uh, pain and 3 uh, uh, to 5 is nagging and comfortable uh, troublesome pain 5 to 7 is distressing miserable pain and 7 to 9 is intense dreadful horrible pain and 10 is like worst pos possible and bearable excruciating pain Uh, so however this is a superficial assessment it will get influenced by the cultural intellectual and psychological uh, aspects of the patients physiological measurement of tinnitus availability uh, of auditory assessment techniques includes uh, spontaneous or uh, toes tympanic electrocochleography direct ethno recording uh, abr and both long latency exogenous and endogenous evoked potential uh, auto acoustic emissions uh, spontaneous oae uh, reported that uh, it corresponds to tinnitus pitch in at best approximately 4 to 5% of cases burns and keef 1991 demonstrated time varying soa spectra and hypothesis that tinnitus is audible only when changes in uh, spontaneous oa spectra are absorbed penner and burns 1987 have suggested that before the link between tinnitus and uh, spontaneous oe several criteria must be satisfied uh, including correspondence between tinnitus pitch and the frequency or frequencies of the um, sfoes uh, that is stimulus uh, frequency oe suppression on uh, spontaneous oe by lower frequency auditory signal must make the tinnitus inaudible masking of tinnitus must abolish the soe OEs with contralateral suppression TOE and DPOE in patients with tinnitus the performance characteristics of the medial oligocochlear uh, system may be normal or deficient as demonstrated in the magnitude of TOE suppression following contralateral stimulation uh, Chedi Cruz et al uh, 1993 showed no efferent uh, suppression or enhancement of TPOE given it all in 2011 the suppression of autoacoustic emissions with the uh, central auditory system uh, seems equally effective in tinnitus patients and uh, healthy controls the minor differences between both groups suggest subtle uh, differences in the function of the medial oligocochlear efferent system 
डायरेक्ट एथ नव रेकॉर्डिंग मुल्ला इटाल नाइनटीन नाइंटी टू रेकॉर्डेड सेंट्रल ऑलिटरी प्रोसेसिंग टू एकॉस्टिक ट्रांसेंस फ्रॉम एक्सपोज एथ नव देर वेर नो बिट डिफरेंस बिटवीन ग्रुप्स पेशेंट्स विथ हियरिंग लॉस एंड टीनाइटिस वर्सेस पेशेंट्स विथ हियरिंग लॉस ओनली so when they did auditory brain stem responses barnia et al 1990 he concluded that there is no group differences in the abr latency amplitude or interwave intervals were noted and just above it all using time series analysis or difference in abr waveform occurred in the latency region of 7 millisecond suggestive of modified auditory processing at the level of mid brain in late cortical evoked potentials uh, it has been hypothesized that constant afferent activity from the periphery re uh, representing tinnitus would result in sustained neural activity in cortical receptor uh, areas where the afferent activity is received this would make those uh, cortical areas less responsive to transient acoustical stimulation and uh, result in significant differences in cortically generated evoked potentials between patients with and without tinnitus um, so next is medical examination under medical examination uh, we do physical examination here the complete head neck and neurodological examination is done auto microscopy that is movements of uh, tympanic membrane on respiration myoclonic activity both of which could produce tinnitus is uh, seen and middle ear space may demonstrate an aberrant carotid artery or jugular vein as well as vascular tumors and otospongiotic foci glomus tumor a swash sign unsuspected uh, neurological abnormalities and skull based tumors can be uncovered by carefully testing each of the cranial nerves including neuromas uh, whereas 9 10 11 can cause pulsatile tinnitus by disturbing flow through jugular bulb uh, meningiomas and multiple sclerosis Uh, endoscopic examination whereas oral cavity is observed in endoscopy and uh, it should be inspected closely for palpation of the temporomandibular joint disorder uh, inspection of dentition and occlusion and observation of palate from myoclonic uh, activity ascul ascultation of the ear canal pre and post auricular regions orbit and neck are also routine aspects of the tinnitus workup radiological evaluation in those patients with the uh, history of noise exposure bilateral non pulsatile tinnitus and consistent audiogram no further testing is need to be uh, done uh, if on the other hand the patient has unilateral uh, tinnitus and an asymmetrical audiogram mri scan with uh, gadolinium uh, contrast agent is the study of the choice to evaluate the possibility of retrocochlear pathology when the patient presents with pulsatile tinnitus without evidence of myoclonus or eustachian tube dysfunction on exam or audiogram uh, an imaging study is necessary so if there is retro uh, tympanic mass is identified the both ct scan and mri should be obtained uh, axial and coronal ct images correctly categorized glomus tumor middle ear adenomas and congenital atrial uh, anomalies additionally ct is better for identifying an aberrant carotid artery or enlarged jugular vein uh, gadolinium enhanced mri will easily demonstrate the size and extent of glomus tumor of the middle ear jugular foramen and vagus nerve as well as uh, neuromas of cranial nerves 9 through 12 laboratory evaluation suggests a metabolic derangement then appropriate blood work should be performed screens for ototoxic drugs and pollutants should be ordered for patients with uh, chronic or acute uh, occupational exposure syphilis serology should be obtained in any patient with unexplained rapidly progressive hearing or uh, balance disorder in a patient with bilateral hearing loss of unknown etiology Uh, an autoimmune workup including blood work for antibody to nuclear antigen rheumatoid factor c reactive protein and western blot immunoassay for serum antibody to inner ear antigens is performed 
So next is mental health assessment. Evaluation uh, by psychiatrist or psychologist should be done due to high proportion of tinnitus patients suffer from depression or anxiety or uh, irritability, annoyance, etc. Next is tinnitus in children with normal hearing. In the, uh, this is the first study to investigate childhood tinnitus was reported in 1972. Nodar uh, in 1972, uh, he examined over 2000 rural United States children between uh, age of 11 and 18 uh, for three years and found that 13.3% who passed a school audiometric screen screening reported noises in their ears when uh, specifically questioned. In contrast, those children who failed the screening test reported noise in their ears 58.6% of the time. Tinnitus in hearing impaired children, tinnitus in association with conductive hearing loss. Mills and Cherry 1984, he reported that 44% uh, of 66 children, 5 to 15 years of age with middle ear uh, disease had tinnitus when specifically asked. A history of recurrent uh, tinnitus media does not appear to be a significant factor in the pathogenesis of tinnitus in children. So there is no statistical correlation uh, found when uh, evaluating children with and without tinnitus and the presence or absence of uh, prior otitis media. Tinnitus in association with moderate severe sensory neural hearing loss. Graham in 1981, he surveyed uh, 74 children ages between 12 to 18 years uh, with moderate to severe SNHL. Um, and found that 66% reported noises in their ear. However, only 30% of the hearing impaired group of children spontaneously complained about uh, prior to evaluation. Of children with unilateral tinnitus and moderate asymmetric uh, SNHL, 89% reported tinnitus in their better hearing ear. Tinnitus associated with severe profound hearing uh, sensory neural hearing loss. Uh, children with profound deafness report tinnitus much less often than children with moderately uh, in, uh, hearing impaired uh, children. The quality of uh, sound perceived by children with profound hearing loss is so poor that tinnitus may be uh, actually interpreted as distorted environmental sounds. So the differences between children and adults, uh, there is a notable difference between tinnitus in children and adults. Uh, so children uh, will complain only rarely of tinnitus compared to adults. It is thought that children with hearing loss uh, may have continuously experienced tinnitus and therefore are not dis uh, disturbed by such a long-standing sensation. In contrast, tinnitus in adults is usually acquired most often the result of a high frequency sensory neural hearing loss associated with age or noise exposure. So there is another difference uh, seen observed uh, in hearing impaired children and adults. Uh, is based on duration. Hearing impaired children nearly always report intermittent tinnitus whereas uh, adults uh, report constant tinnitus and Graham 1995 proposes that congenitally hearing uh, impaired children do not receive constant tinnitus because aberrant afferent neural activity remains below threshold for conscious uh, perception in children. So these are the questions you can expect in your question um, exams. Thank you for joining the webinar.